Now, it, it will not come as news to me if I were to learn that several of you, maybe even many of you, in this class accept hedonism. It's a very popular view, not just among philosophers, where it's a view that's been around you know, as long as there's been philosophy, but sort of among people in the street. It's a, a very tempting view to think what makes life worth having, and the only thing worth having for its own sake is having pleasure and avoiding pain. But for all that, despite the popularity of that view, I'm inclined to think it must be wrong. It's not that I think pleasure isn't good and pain isn't bad. Where hedonism goes wrong is when they say it's the only thing that matters. Here the relevant thought experiment was suggested by Robert Nozick, a philosopher who died a few years ago, taught for many years at Harvard. Nozick invited us to imagine an experience machine. So suppose that the scientists have discovered a way not just to stimulate the particular little pleasure center of the brain, but basically to in give you basically completely realistic virtual reality. So that when you are hooked up to the machine, it seems to you exactly the same on the inside as it would seem to you if you really were, and now fill in the blank. You, know, you could have the identical experience of climbing Mount Everest, let's say, uh, you know, so that you'll feel the wind bracing you. Of course, you won't really feel any wind. Strictly speaking, that's not true, because you're not up on Mount Everest. There is no wind. What's really going on is you're, you're floating in the psychologist's tank in their lab. With the, with the electrodes hooked up to your brain, but, but you don't know that you are floating in the tank. Hooked up to the machine, you believe you are climbing Mount Everest. You feel the thrill of having made it to the top and the wind bracingly, you know, striking your chin and, and you feel the, you know, the satisfaction and you've got the memories of having almost died, you know, when the rope broke before. It's not like being at the IMAX. The crucial point when you're at the IMAX is, although, you know, it's very realistic, part of you is aware that you're just in the theater. But on the experience machine, you don't know you're just in the lab. When you're on the experience machine, you've got I, the, your, your brain is being stimulated in such a way that you've got the identical experience on the inside to what it would feel like if you really were doing these things. So imagine a life on the experience machine. Imagine plugging in the tape says something about how old this example is that we talk about plugging in the tapes. You know, imagine plugging in the, the, you know, the, the DVD or whatever it is with all of the best possible experiences. Wh whatever you think those are. Here, we might have, imagine different people disagreeing about, oh, but you know, throw in something. But you know, if what you want to do is write the great American novel, then you've got the experience of, of staying up late at night, not knowing how to make the plot work up, crushing pieces of paper and throwing them away, and, and crushing your computer, whatever it is you do as you write the great American novel. Or, or, or you want to be you know, finding the cure for cancer, so you've got exactly the experience you would have if you were working in your lab, having the brilliant breakthrough when you finally realize what the combination is that will make the right antibody, whatever it is. Or you know, if you want to be uh, 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 you know, observing all the most beautiful sunsets or the most exotic locales, you've got exactly the experience you would have if you were doing all these things. That's life on the experience machine. You're not doing any of it. You're floating in the lab. But the experiences are identical. Now, ask yourself then, would you want to spend your life hooked up to the experience machine. Ask yourself, how would you feel if you discovered now that you have been living your life hooked up to an experience machine? Now, 
got to make a footnote here. This perfectly glorious philosophical example has been ruined in recent years by the movie The Matrix. Because whenever I tell this story now, people start saying, oh, well, you know, the evil machines are busy using your body as a battery or whatever it was uh, in, in the movie, right? And what if people are just nefariously feasting on my liver, you know, while I'm having these little experiences? Don't imagine any of that. You know, it's not that the evil scientist is just, you know, deliberately deceiving you so as to conduct his nefarious experiments. Nothing like that. And similarly, while we're at it, this is not a matrix-like worry. You know, if you're worried about, yeah, but what's happening to world poverty while I'm doing all this? Just imagine that everybody's hooked up to experience machines, but everybody's got the best possible tapes. Now you ask yourself, what I'm asking you to ask yourself is, would you want to spend your life hooked up to the experience machine? Not talking about, wouldn't it be interesting to try it out for a week or a month or even a year? And indeed, the question, strictly speaking, isn't even, would life on the experience machine be better than it is now? although it would make me very, very sad to discover this, I suppose it's possible some of you have such bad lives that moving on to the experience machine would be a step up. That's not the question. The question is, does life on the experience machine give you everything worth having in life? Everything worth having in life. Is it the best possible form of human existence? According to the hedonists, the answer's got to be, it has to be, yes, life on the experience machine is perfect, as long as you've got the right tape plugged in, so you've got the best possible balance of wonderful pleasures and wonderful, fantastic experiences, since that's all there is to human well-being. By hypothesis, the machine is giving us that. There couldn't possibly be anything more. There couldn't possibly be anything missing. But when I think about the question, would I want to spend my life hooked up to an experience machine, the answer is no. And I imagine that for most of you, when you ask yourself, would you want your entire life to be spent hooked up to the experience machine, your answer is no. But if the answer is no, then that means hedonism's got to be wrong. If life on the experience machine is not everything, then there's more to the best possible life than getting the insides right. The experience machine gets the pleasures right, gets the experiences right, gets the mental states right, it gets the insides right. But if life on the experience machine isn't all that's worth wanting out of life, then there's more to the best possible life than getting the insides right. <laughs>